Trying to push the channel towards 50,000 subscribers if you haven't already, be sure to hit that button. When aircraft formally enter the industry with passengers aboard, their time in the sun and their lasting legacy is something that can definitely vary. Too often, aircraft types come and go, and while their imprint will forever be present, their legacy may be outshone by something else. The Boeing 737, however, has been a mainstay of the industry for over half a decade, a considerable feat that has seen several new iterations launched over the decades. What sets the 737 apart is its adaptability and also longevity. When the 737 was introduced with Lufthansa in 1968, its trajectory was yes in a way obviously hard to predict, but still today in 2024, the aircraft remains a cornerstone of so many airlines fleets in the form of the MAX. This is the latest iteration of this type. But how did we get to the point we are at today? Why was the 737 introduced? And more. The 1950s, 1960s, and onwards to the 1970s did represent a pretty interesting period of innovation for Boeing. The company was very committed to continuously improving its offerings to customers, a spirit of progress that many would argue was really the golden age for Boeing, and one they'd like to see the American plane maker once more return to at least in a modern day interpretation. It won't be exactly the same, but it's those standards of quality that people people want to see Boeing reach once more. The 737-100 and the 737-200 were the initial versions of the 737 series. However, the birth of the 737 as a whole wasn't necessarily a random event. It can be described as a pretty strategic move by Boeing, driven by the need to complement the 727 but on shorter routes with a smaller capacity. The company identified a market gap for a short-haul jet that could fly around 1,600 kilometers or 1,000 miles with a more modest capacity, and the 737 was their solution to this. Designs were floated around that could have actually seen engines tail-mounted in a similar design choice to, say, other aircraft types we'd see. But the 737 would eventually be decided to have the engines relocated to the wings by none other than Joe Sutter. Yes, the father of the 747 and a forever icon of our industry. The refinements didn't stop there with adjustments throughout. Allowing the fuselage to be lower to the ground provided adequate access for crews when it came to loading bags and also think about for passengers with the accessibility of stairs. While this appeared genius at the time, and definitely was, Boeing's continued reliance on these old, dated design choices would lead them to have to cut corners in their latest iteration, the MAX, to enable it to get certified on time. This was all in an attempt also to lower costs. That's certainly a story for another day, but back at the 737's origins, these things were very important to the success of the program. The launch of the family began in February 1965 with the first customer, Lufthansa, marking a very important milestone. Lufthansa did initially order just over 20 units, and their commitment was followed by United Airlines. The response from these customers was instrumental in shaping the 737, with in some instances, your customers requesting a longer fuselage, and others suggesting other key refinements. This customer-centric approach has been a key part of Boeing's success, making the aircraft obviously as desirable as possible. This the main objective. Further development of the 737 occurred as the decades progressed, with the American plane maker leveraging new technologies to its advantage. This adaptability, whether extending the fuselage, improving the engines, adding capacity or something else, has really been a critical factor as to why the 737 has enjoyed such long-sustained success. The design, at its core, has mostly stayed the same, with each iteration, yes, offering slight improvements, while the fuselage remains intact. Other refinements that are more than evident is by looking at the engines. On your screen now is the 737-100. Take a look at it. In comparison to now, the 737 Max. The adjustments are very visible, but at its core, the 737 has remained true and the same to what it has been known for, a testament to what it can really do. 
The question over whether the overall design staying the same this long into the future was a burden to Boeing can certainly be had in the comments and be another video in itself. But what has remained true as well is the jet has remained a commercial success. Wherever it's gone, whatever iteration has been released, it's been successful for Boeing. Airlines that have purchased the 737 have highlighted that its capabilities have been able to redefine travel and also its affordability alongside range and capacity has meant that for so many airlines, the 737 has been essential to the development of themselves as an airline. It takes only a short period of time to look at some of the leading airlines of Southwest and Ryanair. These are two companies that rely heavily on the series, and only the 737. With the longevity of it in the market, something else that can't be understated. The aircraft remains a workhorse for airlines right around the world. Take a look in the most remote and northern parts of Canada. Airlines are using past generation 737s that can be around 40 to 50 years of age to their advantage still to this day in 2024. And while they will be eventually phased out, it highlights just how important they've been throughout their life operating so many different kinds of missions. Generally, and maybe the more boring part of the 737's success, but something that has to be mentioned, has been its ability to slot into so many airline networks. Being smaller, it's more agile. It can fly into pretty much all primary, secondary, or even regional airports for airlines. Additionally, it's an aircraft that airlines have kept returning to. With each new product promising improvements, the relationship between the manufacturer and existing customer has only grown stronger with each iteration. And more often than not, that customer will come back for the newest plane. The 737 certainly helped reshape air travel. Just like so many other aircraft released around the same period, and arguably the ability to continue releasing new iterations across over half a century, highlights the importance of the 737 in the market no matter what the conditions. What is next for the 737? Well, that is something that deserves a video in itself. But following so many problems that we've seen with the MAX dating back to the certification and build efforts, the likelihood is that Boeing finally says goodbye to what is now a dated fuselage and in probably need of moving on to something that is a little bit more modern and would be able to take, say, your next airline customer towards the 2060s. It's a scary prospect when understanding just how forward-thinking these manufacturers manufacturers need to be. Some of us won't be around in 2060, some of us will be retired, and some of us will have families. It is a long time away, but for the aviation world, that will arrive in a blink of an eye. And you've always got to be preparing for what's next. What are your thoughts on the 737, from its conception to where it stands now today in the aviation world? You can let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Thank you very much for your support here on the channel. I will see you in a couple of days for your latest industry analysis. And flight, and we'll fly.